Hi everyone, Tristan here from SUV RVing, and I have yet another really cool rig tour for you. This is a 2005 Honda CRV camper. I'll give you a quick look at it behind me here. Really cool little adventure mobile. I'm here with Nate and his dog, Bobby, and they're on a long road trip from Canada. He can tell you all about that. And Nate has a YouTube channel and an Instagram account that I will put on the screen here, and he can tell you a little bit more about those also. Now let's turn it over to Nate so he can show us his set up in this CRV here. Hi there, my name is Nate Gates. Uh, I do photography uh, with my partner, Nicole. We have Nate Nicole Photography, uh, and I'm from Canada, Newfoundland, Canada, but I'm also American. I've been wanting to do this trip for a couple years, basically since before COVID happened, <laughs> I was planning this, and then COVID kind of put everything on hold with border crossings and all that. So finally I'm able to do it, get my organization. Um, and so I've kind of been I took my vehicle, which I already had, and I was like, I wanted to make it into uh, an adventure mobile. And uh, I wanted to do a build, but I kind of came up with my own way. Like, a lot of times, say, uh, uh, on YouTube, they talk about doing, you know, two by fours and uh, three quarter inch plywood, but that adds up to a lot of weight. So I end up using just like this one by threes, and I have plywood here that I latch in here, and it's, but it's like, a thinner plywood, right? And with supports, beams in between. Sorry. So uh, I think I was able to reduce the weight quite a bit. Got a wool blanket, very warm, love it. Uh, sleeping bag, sheets, and the mattress here is a trifold. I think this is like a 32 inch wide. And you can get these on Amazon. They're awesome. Super comfortable. Um, so. The bed goes all the way up there. There's a little flippy thing I'll show you when we get up there so that I can have enough space for the whole person laying down. Um, no seats other than the driver's seat. I took out all the seats and it's a bit tight, you know, but again, I'm a small person. I'm pretty nimble. I can move around a lot, right? This setup is not for everybody, but for me as a videographer and a photographer, I have a lot of equipment that I bring with me on these trips, on any trips, you know, so I wanted as much space as possible underneath so that I could store my stuff there and nobody would see it. Um, so that really was essential for me. So I gave up some headroom space in order to have that. I just use a regular suitcase for my clothes. It's kind of a pain to pull out, but um, it's convenient when you're going places. I have to stop and visit family. I just pull out the suitcase and I got everything I need in there. There's extra shoes. This is my garbage bin and um, poop bucket when I need, right? Um, put the thing in there. There's my camping stove. Uh, that's just towel and stuff. Uh, this is a little container of diesel fuel. That's for the diesel heater, which we will be showing. Uh, this is camera bag. And I got uh, toiletry stuff there, garbage bags. It's all crammed in. It's much better. Oh, and here's my little seat. I love this little seat. Oh my gosh. It's the best little seat. It takes up no space and folds out into a little stool and that's my seat that's it I don't have another seat but again not for everybody I've, I've shown other people this seats and they're like it has no back on it but it's, it's not for everybody uh, so the platform I built in two pieces there's a back section and a front section and the reason is the front section I can take out and still have all my seats in the car and then still have this back section to use as a platform just for a normal driving around when I'm not camping. Um, and it's also, it's much easier to remove and put in, in pieces. And so the top piece here, I've got fitted inside the grooves and I just have it latched in there so it doesn't make noises on the road. And that comes out and there's just the little latches on there. And those just go into the, I just drilled some little holes here. And then this is the whole uh, kind of frame. And for support, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven legs for support. And um, I could have put more, but again, I wanted space. I wanted to be able to slide this in here and slide, have as much room going in here to slide stuff in. And I tested it out a lot to make sure that uh, this was really solid for me to, to sleep on. And 
these, these bolts here hold this frame to the front frame. That also gives extra support because now those are um, integral attached to each other. So this, this, um, this is like high quality plywood and I think it's only the specifications I'm pretty sure are seven or eight millimeters. And I can't remember what that would be in inches, but it's a lot thinner than three quarter inch plywood and a lot lighter, like three quarter inch plywood, you could not do that. So that's why I came up with this whole idea of like having these supports here instead of just having the plywood be, it's just the whole setup is a lot lighter, which is important in a small SUV because they're not designed to carry all that weight. All right, so I'll show you what I have in uh, the side entrance here. Uh, again, small space, so you have to really utilize the space well. So I got my water here, I should fill up when I can. It's mostly for cooking and cleaning. Uh, bottled water I try to use for drinking. Uh, this is my one wheel, this is my transportation. Uh, they take a, lot, take a while to learn how to use, but they're awesome for transportation around town. If you can snowboard, you can ride one. All right, uh, so then there's the bed, as I said. Um, I got these drawers just from Walmart. They were only 15 bucks and eight bucks maybe. Um, originally, I did not have any kind of an organization system in here. I just had stuff in big plastic bags and what turned out to be a nightmare to find anything when you want it. So separating your items, very good. So you know where everything is. And then I have a fridge. It's, it's similar to a Dometic, but this is from a company, from an online seller called Verver. This was a really good deal. I think I got it for about $225. And it holds just as much as the cooler I used to have, but um, you don't have to deal with the ice. And that is a big bonus. No ice is a big deal. Okay, and I just have that plugged in around in the front to my Jackery 500. And I coated, I covered the whole thing with Reflectex. I saw somebody online do that and I was like, geez, that's a good idea. And I think it does make a difference in the amount of energy it has to use because it's more insulated. And again, separating is making my life a whole lot easier. So I bought these packing cubes just at Walmart. And in this one is all my toiletries. I got a uh, toothbrush, some powder, deodorant, everything I need when I go to clean myself up. This one I've got a full set of clothes and uh, some soap. And what I do is, it, like for example, if you go anywhere and you want to change your clothes, you got your soap in there, you got to change your clothes, you can go in just to the washroom and change, or if you're really feeling, you know, lucky, you can go in truck stop uh, shower and have a really good day. And some of this stuff is just strewed in here. I've got uh, some flavored water, which I love. Uh, this Pedialyte electrolyte solution I've been using. I don't know if it's any good or not, it should be. But in this dry environment, I'm trying to keep hydrated. I mix that in the water. This is my wash basin for when I can't be near a, a washroom. Just use uh, soap and washcloth and clean myself up. Got some extra stuff in there, toilet paper, and there's more soap. And my dishes and, and food items are over in there, and the dog food, and there's other snacks. Oh, coffee maker. This is my favorite thing ever. Caflano coffee maker. Okay, everybody watch this. Okay, you unscrew. Whoop, beans are in there already. Anyway, what you do is you grind your beans. I'm not gonna grind them for long enough. Grind your beans, and then underneath, they go into the filter, and underneath that, is the cup so you pour your hot water over that and you have fresh coffee wherever you want whenever you want it's awesome better than any coffee i got in a rest stop and i've just got some bungees here uh, that are attached to the legs of my frame for the bed uh, just around to keep these drawers from sliding out when you're moving uh, and on i don't know a lot of people love coffee i love coffee like, i cannot go a day without coffee usually multiple cups so I've got my coffee maker, which is awesome. But what I discovered on this trip is you can just get something like this, this Stoke Cold Blue Coffee and some kind of a, this is an almond creamer. Those two together are, again, better than any like pickup coffee that you'll, you'll get in a little rest stop.
And I love these. These are lifesavers because they take no work. Keep them in the fridge all the time. Coffee, anytime you want. My initial plan, because I love to cook, was to do lots of cooking. But the reality is it's a lot of cleanup <laughs> when you're cooking. So I've pared it down to mostly, yeah, so I got some beef jerky here. I got some yogurt, some that's fruit I picked up at a hotel. I've got uh, mayonnaise, which goes with the tuna fish in the can there, and apples. Apples are great because it gets you fruit and they keep a long time. I don't think I even need to refrigerate them, but I do. Um, and I, I usually have cheese in there and a few other things that are ready to eat. I have some bars. I try to keep it as simple as possible. This is kind of good. got a lot of straps going on there, I know, but um, these you can get on Amazon. This is a pretty sturdy one. I can't remember what they're called. They're just like headliner storage. But I had to ex add some extra straps. I got some like tie down straps to keep it really secure. But it's convenient to be able to some, put some things up there. You know, I've got the, um, got my window cover there for the front window to keep things cool and to get a privacy. Um, and I've got gloves and hats and a few of the paperworks. Um, and I even have because I'm a very fastidious, clean person. I have a little vacuum in there. It's right here, it's a little hand vacuum. Yeah. Uh, my power is my uh, Jackery 500, okay? And I use that to power the refrigerator when I'm not moving and to uh, recharge all my gear, my camera equipment, phones and whatnot. When I'm moving, I use the power from the cigarette lighter and I've got a splitter which really makes it helpful because I can have multiple things going because some of them use a cigarette lighter and some use a USB lights headlamps make sure you have multiple of these I have several of them around the car okay and this is Bobby's spot here this is a little bed I had to get him used to traveling so he was sleeping in that for a couple weeks before we left and now that's his home so he sleeps in there and he looks out he loves it I got his food and water there whenever he needs this is just a little rubber mat I use that to keep this from sliding around and it's great if I need to get on the ground and fix something under the car um, and then I have this giant bin which locks and that just holds a whole bunch of stuff like pots and pans and uh, there's a tarp for the roof um, all kinds of stuff too much stuff. All right, and the charging systems here, I've got all my cords. This is the Jackery charger. Plugs into that to charge the Jackery when you're moving. Other USB chargers. And I also have this, stop it. This um, little power inverter, I got this from Amazon. It's great. It's uh, high quality, so you, have, you can charge your computer without worrying. Some of those cheap inverters, uh, you can mess up your computer. You have to be really careful. Uh, this is a really high quality one and just plugs in there and you get uh, 120 volt. So uh, traveling with a pet is wonderful because you always have a friend and a companion. You're not just there by yourself. And he's also a really good watchdog. He's not a great guard dog. He tries to be, but he's a good watchdog. He makes sure nobody's doing anything weird around. Um, I got a little fan here for him, USB fan. I just hang that up there, put it right on him. When I put the uh, reflector window covering in the front window, I crack the windows. I love these, the CRV, because they have these, you know, the, the shields on there, so you can have the windows cracked. Don't, nobody even knows you have it cracked. So I crack all four windows, put in the win thing in the front, and put the fan on him. And he's nice and cool in here, unless it's an extreme hot day um, in Arizona or something. But usually it's pretty good. When it's even hotter, I've got this thing which is called a silver paw cooling pad. And if you just touch that, yeah, it stays, it's got a gel in there and it keeps nice and cool. So when it's really hot, I put that on there and he sits on that and he loves it. That's, it's just, just what you have to do because you can't take your pet everywhere. You can bring him in the car and it's fine in the national parks, but also uh, try to find a spot under a tree, obviously. I always go out of my way to park under a tree to make sure there's no problem. And a lot of, a lot of animals uh, have a hard time initially with the travel. I know that, they get sick, uh, they're not used to it. And he was the same way, he was nervous, he didn't know what was going on. But eventually he learned and now he will eat and drink while we're moving, whereas initially he wouldn't do that. He wasn't happy with that. Yeah, so anytime you gotta leave the dog in the car, it can be a problem and you know, like he's only a small dog, he can only go on hikes, you know, so long. So if I wanna do a long hike, I either gotta carry him 
or leave them in the car. So that's just the way to go. If you have a really sporty dog, it would be easier, I think, because they can keep up with you and deal with uh, more extreme environments. Yeah, it's just the, the, the main issue with dogs and, and any pets is just some places you can't take them. And so that ends up being a problem. If you can't find a place to make sure that they're safe um, while staying in the car. So overall, I would like uh, on this trip especially, I'm really glad to have my dog with me because he's great company and he appreciates it and I appreciate it. Um, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. And I was really concerned, probably over concerned about keeping warm, but it's just where I was coming from. It was really cold. <laughs> um, now that I'm here, it's kind of overkill. But for future winter camping, um, I also have a diesel heater. It's a diesel parking heater. And this sucker here, um, I have to, if you ever get one of these, you have to assemble them yourself. They don't come, I mean, this whole part is assembled, but underneath the piping you have to assemble. Uh, there's lots of YouTube videos on how to do it. Um, and it's got a little control panel here. I just plug that in our little cord here. This just plugs into the Jackery cigarette lighter, right? And um, you just basically you just push a button, and it just takes five to ten minutes to kind of warm up, and then it starts pumping out out of here. I've got a little tube under there, which you don't see, but I attach a tube here so I can direct it. But it starts pumping out hot air, like really hot air. It's amazing, and it uses diesel fuel and. I think I, I bought a gallon of diesel fuel and I've used the heater probably four or five nights and I've gone through probably a, you know, 20th of a gallon for, for five nights. Um, and the power it uses out of the Jackery is pretty minimal. It will jump up to like maybe 40 or 50 watts when it's heating up, but then it'll go back down to five or 10 watts, uh, you know, just to keep a constant flow. So uh, they give you this pipe here um, when they when they sell the whole unit um, but then you have to figure out a way to kind of vent it now some people put the whole unit outside I didn't want to do that I wanted it to be ready to go all the time not have to move it at all so I vented this pipe into some kind of plumbing fixtures that I figured out how to hook up there and the plumbing goes I drilled one hole in the floor and then underneath here's the plumbing pipe it comes out the bottom like I said I drilled a hole there I've got some gaskets some gasket sealant you have to make sure there's nothing um, that is flammable or could possibly catch fire anywhere near this it gets really hot all right so I'd cut away the carpet and stuff all right so I just got a plug in there when I'm not using it Unplug, unscrew that and then I just got a few of these plumbing fixture pipes that I screw in so you, you have to be conscious. This is diesel exhaust, so it's very dangerous. You cannot have this going up in the car. I also have a carbon monoxide um, tester to make sure that I turn on when I'm using it. But it, they come with this little muffler. I wrapped it up to get a bit extra. But so now what happens when the diesel heater's on? The, the exhaust comes out there. This muffler does help with the noise. It makes a bit of noise, kind of a whirring noise, and this quiets it down in case you got people around. So that's that. So I love that, uh, yeah, Tristan said he loved this too, so I thought I'd mention it. Yeah, that the uh, spare wheel is on the back, which is cool. I have used a couple bolts to put this uh, gas can holder on there so that I have extra gas. You will notice that it is open and getting dust in it. But um, there's a reason for that. That's because we had an incident just the other day where a tree branch uh, poked right into it and I lost uh, some fuel. I tried to save as much as possible to not litter the environment with gasoline and keep my money. But um, anyway, I have to get a new gas can because of that. That's just part of the deal. But it's great. Anybody traveling doing this kind of adventure traveling I, another big thing is that if you have extra gas, it's a big deal. It makes such a big difference. Like if you're low on fuel, if you're off road and you don't have to worry about having to find a gas station just to get to the next spot. Uh, this is just a regular um, hitch for a trailer. And I got this online. This is a recovery point. It's, it's locking just so people don't steal it because it's kind of a nice one. But this can be flipped 90 degrees either way. Uh, of course, I don't have a wench or anything, but you know, if I have a friendly person come along who has a Jeep or a truck and I'm stuck in a, 
in a, a ditch, he can pull me out because I've got a recovery strap too. Uh, in this bag, I've got uh, recovery uh, tracks in case we get stuck in mud or something. That just could help me, mud or snow. Um, they're just uh, inexpensive ones, but I don't anticipate having to use them a whole lot. Um, the roof rack I got on Amazon. It's really solid and sturdy. I mean, it's kind of silly right now. All I have is these recovery tracks, but I can take the giant bin that I have inside and put it on top of the car. The problem is for going long distance is it's gonna eat your gas mileage. So I try to keep it inside the car. But for off-roading, it's convenient to be able to pop it up top if you need more space inside the car. This is uh, just a fence post that I cut and I drilled holes and I painted it with uh, undercoating and this is used as a base to hold my awning which is just um, heavy duty silver tarp and then I just attach the tarp at the holes screw them on and then I have poles that I use to um, create an awning with some uh, stake tie downs. The, the wheels this side you don't know it quite as much. It's definitely, this is higher than stock, but it's car is loaded down. The front you notice more, um, but this has got a lift on it about one and a half inches. Uh, and I'll tell you where it's from. It's, a, uh, it's called from Honda Rescue Garage. If you're looking at Honda specifically, he has a lift kit and it's really sturdy and it's really solid. Okay, so I love the lift. It really helps me get over some of the rougher roads. I've covered some stuff that I didn't think uh, I would have been able to cover without the lift and the bigger tires. So these are BF Goodrich ATs, some of the best off-road and on-road tires you can get. They're great because I live up in Canada and most people have to swap their tires twice a year. They put this, the winter tires on in the winter and the summer tires in the summer. But these tires I leave on all year and never have to swap my tires. So they're good in snow, mud, dirt, everything. So the lift and the bigger tires and the roof rack and the little light kit here, right? Which works intermittently because it uh, seems to be disconnecting, but it does work when it works. Um, I put all those on and they're great when you're not going over 50 <laughs> miles an hour. But as soon as you hit highway speeds, they really do eat into the, the power and the gas of the car. So that's just a sacrifice you have to make. I think this car is supposed to be getting 19 to 20 miles a gallon. You know, that's older Hondas, just as how they are. They weren't made as efficient as new ones. Um, but I probably average 14 or 15. So that's just because of the lift and everything else and all the weight, of course. These lights are just aftermarket. Again, Amazon. Old car, it didn't bother me to drill into the roof. I just drilled in and I screwed these down and I used silicone to uh, seal it and it's worked it hasn't been a problem no leaking and it's nice to have extra lighting on the front i also have fog lights that i added um, these i use these all the time um, again aftermarket i just install them this is unusual to see on a honda crv this is a this is a bull bar from a ford f-150 i just found it online for cheap it was 30 bucks from uh, like a guy selling it and I had to do a bit of welding to mount it inside here. I just cut the front. Again, old car, I just cut the grill. Um, but I got it to work and it's pretty friggin' sturdy, I'll tell you, because I've had people back into me and their bumper got squished and my car did not get damaged. So it's, it, it will help in an incident that you uh, needed some extra protection. Yeah, so this light kit, uh, it's not made, that's just an, it's branded to fit any car, according to what they say, but it fits really well with the CRV. It kind of looks factory, which is pretty impressive. Um, and then the switches, um, I just got some of these, these rocker switches here to turn the lights off and on. There's one, two, I didn't know where, there was, there was already holes there, so I just used those. And the third one I stuck in here because uh, there was no third hole. So what happens is one switch will turn on the outer, one turn on the inner, and then one is for the fog lights in the front. And as far as adding extra lighting, like it looks nice and it's cool and you can really light up when you're off road, when there's no lights around. But the truth is what I mo mostly use is the headlights, the high beams and the fog lights. The roof lights, I only very rarely feel the need to add extra lighting with the roof lights. It's not that much different than the fog lights. So, you know, a lot of people feel they need to add all this extra lighting, but I don't think you need all that.
I love the way it looks. Uh, I think it's great, and people comment on it all the time. I was at a, at a truck stop the other night, and some, some usually CRV owners come up to me, and they're like, whoa, look, that CRV, what'd you do to it? So that's kind of cool. Um, but it's a small vehicle inside, and I thought, it, I thought it would be big enough, but it's a really, it's tight. It's tight in there. That's just the way it is. Uh, I would like to have a bigger vehicle just for the space, for no other reason. But on this trip, it's, it's been good to me, you know. I love being able to pull over and not think about getting out of the car. Just go to sleep, jump right in the back, go to sleep, and then get up and go when I'm ready to go. And um, it's pretty stealth. Like, uh, I think a lot of the stuff on YouTube really, I've, I've fallen into the trap myself of overkill, overkill. Because there's so much stuff on YouTube about you got to do this, 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 and this, and this, and this to do this kind of stuff. But like the windows are darker and it's like you put the sunshade in the front i have window coverings but i forgot them <laughs> so i've just been going without and i haven't really noticed a difference i don't feel like i lack privacy well nate thank you for sharing your setup with us uh any final words of advice for people any any final tips anything else you want to any other knowledge you want to impart this uh, whole thing where you like go on the road and go camping and venturing and everything in whatever vehicle you have um, is a great idea, but it's a huge learning experience if you've never done it before. You can watch all the YouTube videos there are and still you will figure it out as you go. That's the best advice is just figure it out as you go. But yeah, planning at home will only get you so far. You'll learn, you'll learn a lot more just doing one little overnight trip yeah. than you will in, in months of watching YouTube videos. Not to say you shouldn't watch YouTube videos oh, yeah. like this. They're very but, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, if you can, do a, a practice trip, a short practice trip. That'll really help you iron out your, your system and get it the way you want it to be. But tell people again what your, your YouTube channel is and what your Instagram account is. Yep. Nate Nicole on YouTube and Nate Nicole Photography on Instagram. And if you guys have any questions about Nate's setup here, leave a comment down below. We'll be looking at those and answering them as we can. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks again, Nate, for sharing your rig with us. Thank you, Tristan. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.